So it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Patrick Ar Arminio, um, who is the creator of Strawberry GraphQL. Um, and he will be uh, broadcasting remotely. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you, uh, even if it's not in person this time. Um, yeah, I just shared my screen. So yeah, today we're going to talk about, you know, integrating uh, GraphQL API with Bugtail and some of the experience that we're doing this week. Uh, I'm going to do a introduction of myself. Um, yeah, I'm, my name is Patrick Arminio. I'm the creator of Strawberry GraphQL, which is a Python library for uh, creating GraphQL APIs using Titans. Uh, which is a new Python feature. Uh, I think it was raised in Python 3.6. Might not be correct, but uh, it's rarely new, uh, but it's becoming more popular. Uh, and we're going to see an example of uh, what type in means in, in Python later in the talk. I'm also the chair of Python Italia. We organize uh, the Python Italy, and I'm also a member of the board of EuroPython Society, and we do uh, EuroPython. Um, and the reason why I'm giving this talk is mostly because we just launched a new website for EuroPython and uh, the website is in Next.js and uh, React. And we are you know, uh, adding markdown files to, to change the content. And we were looking at using the CMS for uh, just making the life easier of the content editor and not having to, um, to deal with um, uh, you know, the markdown files and, you know, should be tapped into it. Um, and, you know, in the first talk this morning, you, you know why uh, Wagtail is a really good CMS. And I think, like, my reference on, you know, on Wagtail is mostly towards the, the stream field, which I think it's a really awesome feature. I think it's something that's going to make our life easier because, you know, with stream fields, you can find some box that you want to enable for your editors to use and then they, they go and use them in the front end. Uh, you get to understand what kind of you have, and then you can, you know, for example, if you have a block for a card, you can, you know, get all of that. And we have an example here, stream field view. So this is a home page which has a body and is a stream field. So when you click here, you can choose all the blocks that uh, I created for, for this specific thing. So for example, heading, paragraph, image, and so on. Um, um, yeah, so this this is why I, I really really think we should go with Wagtail, and we're gonna start working on that. Uh, but all of this also prompted me to you know there's something I always wanted to do. Uh, I think I, I actually tried to do uh, a Wagtail GraphQL API I think two or three years ago. I didn't really have time to finish that. Um, but yeah, um, I'm gonna show you what I've done this way in a few seconds. But before doing that, I just want to you know, show a quick example of the reason why she got here and what actually is. So not many people might be familiar with it since it's a kind of new technology is not as popular as that. Um, in order to, um, you know, to make you understand what that can is, I have a demo of an API that I have built. It's something that's already available on the web. Uh, but it's, it's good to you know, go and test something that uh, it's, you know, has a lot of features and things you can try. So, as I mentioned, GraphQL is a way to, to build APIs for a website or application. And the difference with REST is that, you know, with REST, you have different points. For example, if you want to fetch a, this is an API for country. If you want to fetch a country with a code IT, you might have an endpoint that's slash country slash IT, and you will get all the data for the country. With GraphQL, things are slightly different. You, you have only one endpoint. And you send a document to the endpoint describing the, the data that you want. So for example, if you want to fetch a country, here you can do country code team. Uh, you can get maybe the name, things like that. Um, and this is really powerful because it does solve a couple of problems of, um, of REST. Like Kafka is always seen as an alternative to REST. The, the reason why is uh, I think it's because, you know, Kafka was created by, by Facebook and they were trying to solve some issues that REST had, which are unfetching and overfetching. They had a lot of, you know, mobile clients that, you know, needed to get the DPS as simple as possible. So, um, understanding in, in REST basically means that you have an API that's not returning enough data. And to get over, you might need to do multiple API calls. So, for example, if you are fetching here the, the continent, 
in a traditional REST API, like a proper RESTful API, you might get the content and then only get the code or the ID, and then you will need to do another API code to go and touch that. Uh, which is, it's a waste of data because again, you know, you're, you're doing two, two API calls and uh, there's latency and so on. Um, and then, you know, to solve this problem, you, you could build an API that will solve all the information that you might need, but then you over touch them. So let's say that I'm also returning, you know, the countries here uh, and the name for the countries. If I'm building an API that only needs, you know, just the name of the continent and the country, and I don't need the list of countries for the, this specific funding. And I'm, and I now have an API that's returning too much data, which is overfetching. And again, it's a waste of data, basically. Um, I, I think yeah, GraphQL is really powerful for this specific features. You know, being able to declare the data that you want, it makes it kind of makes the API more performant. But to me, the coolest feature and the most useful feature of GraphQL is the type system. Uh, which basically means that every GraphQL API has a schema, and when you're doing a query, you can easily understand what kind of data you, you're getting back. So here, um, I have this, this query that I'm you know, testing for getting a list of countries based by a currency, and I can see when I over, over it using this tool, uh, I can see that the return type of this uh, field is a list of country and is not optional. So this exclamation mark means that this field is always going to be so it's going to return something. Um, on the opposite side, we have a code here for the state, which is a string, but it's not, uh, it's not required, so it's option. And you can see in the return type, the return data is actually going to be null. So this makes your you know, life easier because you have an API that's, um, that's basically type safe. So you can, you're basically sure that when you're running this query, the data that's coming back is actually what you want. Um, and this type system, the fact that it is a built-in, because GraphQL is a spec that has all these things built in, it makes uh, make it, your life easier by enabling like some sort of set of tools, like for example, the graphical the background, which is this one. So, you know, when I was playing around with this, I didn't really have to remember all the things available here because it, it does do like, you know, auto completion, things like that. So I don't have to remember uh, what this API, how this API works. And then you get auto, auto generated docs. For example, you can see all the information that you want to fetch. So, for example, for continents here, you can see also the, the arguments. You can see that you can filter by code, uh, things like that, which is really powerful. Um, and this is what I mentioned by the schema. So, every GraphQL API has a schema which describes all the, uh, the types in the, in the API. So, and as we mentioned that there's a special type, which is the query, which is basically the, the root type. So all the data that you can fetch from the top, from the root is the, it comes from here. So for example, this continents field, it's coming from, from here, from the root type. Um, other tools that are really cool, I think CodeGen is another one, which I use a lot. Uh, there's one within JavaScript, which is Kafka CodeGen here. If I can open it. So this tool basically allows you to transform a GraphQL query to a code. So for example, you can have TypeScript code for, for React frontend, which uh, you know, creates a uh, hook that you can easily use without you know, just writing just the query and then it does everything for you. Uh, the cool thing is that it's also typed. So for example, when you're using the, this hook on your frontend, you can basically get auto completion, which is really nice, but also you, you get the type check, which is uh, really useful. Um, what I'm currently working on, we are using CodeGen in a guess, strange way. We are actually generating uh, REST APIs on top of GraphQL APIs. So we, we get an API like this, a uh, query like this, we run some code, and then we get an endpoint for fast API that returns a GraphQL API. Uh, we do this mostly because we are transitioning to GraphQL and we want to support some older clients that only use REST anymore. Uh, other thing is like schema validation is really powerful. It's similar to you know just type checking in Python and TypeScript. If you you get this for for you know for your period. So for example, if I have a typo here, the ID that I'm using the playground I'm using is already telling me that you know there is a typo here. But even if I do this, uh, if I try this query, I'm gonna have a validation error. So the GraphQL server is not even trying to run this query because it's not valid. So you're trying to fetch something that doesn't. Um, 
that's not gonna work. Um, and then the last tool, which I think it's really cool, is Apollo Federation. Uh, and Apollo Federation is basically a way to combine multiple GraphQL APIs into one. So let's say that you have a one GraphQL API, and then you have maybe an e-commerce API, and you wanna have used both of them on the front end, but you don't wanna deal with two APIs, you can use Apollo Federation to combine them into one. And so your front end doesn't need to know that there's two, um, two different uh, GraphQL server. So hopefully that, you know, that kind of makes you think, yeah, GraphQL is quite cool, I would like to try it. Um, but, you know, Wagtail already provides REST API. So you might not need GraphQL for, for Wagtail, especially if the REST API is, is good enough for you. Um, you know, the reason why, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably biased here because you know, I work on a GraphQL API and I use GraphQL every day. So I'm really into the tooling and I use GraphQL a lot. So, you know, for me, it's an obvious choice to just go and use GraphQL than for Wagtail. Um, but the fact that you have all these tools here, you know, project, schema validation, like Apollo Federation, they make your life so much easier that I think it makes a lot of sense for you to use uh, GraphQL with Wagtail. And uh, what I've been working on as well in, with my integration with Wagtail is that, um, you know, these string fields, which, you know, they're represented as JSON in the backend. In, in a GraphQL API, they're actually not JSON. They actually have their type. So on the front end, you can go and say, oh, if it's the type of this and heading, then do something else, uh, which I think it's really, uh, really powerful. Cool. Um, just wanted to just give you a quick interaction of what Strawberry is. Um, so I started Strawberry, I think, three years ago, more or less, and it's becoming quite popular, relatively popular, I guess, now these days. And there's a lot of people using it, which is quite nice. Uh, and the community around it, it's, uh, it's really um, welcoming and friendly. Um, and what they came, that survey came to be mostly because I was open on data classes. Uh, I was at Jungle in US, I think in 2018, and there was this talk that was describing how data classes work and what they do. Um, and this syntax is very nice. It makes, you know, writing a class in Python so much nicer than, uh, than normally. So, like what data class do is basically go and reads all the fields that you're listing, and then it creates equality method, constructor method, uh, and so on, with just three lines of code, which is really nice. And then the other very cool thing is that it's using type ins. So, type ins in Python, there like a new feature that allow you to basically annotate your Python code with types. So, in this case, I'm saying that this class user has a field called property called name, which is a type string. And then Python doesn't really do anything with it. Uh, it doesn't, you know, if you try to instantiate user with um, with one for the name as an integer, it's not going to complain. But if you use tools like MyPy or PyWrite, uh, you're going to see that, um, you know, the type checker uh, are going to complain. So you're going to, you know, you get this type safety uh, with Python as well. But the other cool thing is like, uh, interesting enough, Python allows you to get information about this annotation at runtime. Uh, which is what I was actually powering, powering uh, Survey. So if you want to make a user GraphQL type with Survey, it's almost the same code. You only swap the decorator using Survey type. And what we do is basically we go and read all the annotations, get all the fields, we get the types, and then we try to convert this type to a, um, a GraphQL type. So I'm going to show an example of how this works. So let's say that we're doing similar API uh, that we have before. So we have this type user, which is you know, what we just wrote, and then we have a the query type, which is the root type. And in the query type, we have a field for user by ID, which accepts one argument, which is ID, and returns an optional user. To convert this to Strawberry, it's, um, it's quite straightforward. So you import Strawberry, you create the class for every type that you have, in this case, user, where the name is a string, and then you add the decorator. Then the last step is to create the root type, which is the query, and you have the user by the here, which is returning an optional user. And then the, the special thing here is that you are attaching the resolver to this field. So you know you need to tell basically Kafka allow to fetch the data for every field that you have. So uh, Kafka has this concept of resolvers, which are basically functions that get called when someone requests a field. So if a client is requesting this field, then um, 
this Python file was going to be called. And Survey knows to uh, get the, the arguments of this function out then to the um, to the front end, to the query field. The last thing to do is to create the schema using survey that schema. And that's basically to you know, create a small graphical API in survey. Um, and I think this syntax is quite nice and it also pretty pretty much similar to what you would just write in, in plain graphical, you know, the schema, uh, for example, here, it almost looks like you know, Python just has curly braces and maybe some interesting things here. So let's see how we can, you know, build a quick uh, API tool for uh, for Wagtail. So let's say that we have this uh, block page model. So we have a body, which is a rich text field, date, and a feed image. So this is this is how you make the GraphQL API. I guess it will change based on your usage, but like normally it would be something like this. So we have a type query where you have a, a field that allows you to fetch a block page by ID. And then we have a field that allows you to fetch all the block pages. And I believe you that Pudgy is to search here, but just to keep things simple, I haven't added them here. Um, and then the type for the block page is, you know, straightforward as an ID, body, a date, and a field image. The only interesting thing here is that the body is of type HTML. And in GraphQL, we have two kinds of types. So you have object types, which are basically types that have fields. And then you have scalar types, which are types like string, name, date, ID, integer, and so on. And HTML doesn't really exist in GraphQL. It's just a, it's a type that we create. So uh, GraphQL allows you to create custom scalars. And the reason why we do this is to basically improve the type system. So we know that this body is actually storing the HTML. So we want to tell this to the, our type. So when a client goes and reads the, the body, it knows that you know you should do something with the HTML. You could do the same, for example, if you if you write body uh, in Markdown. So you could say this is Markdown, and that your client will need to convert the Markdown to HTML. To convert this to to Python, uh, to yeah, to Python and so very you it's similar to before, but the thing is uh, you need to create this color. So we're using the survey scalar constructor to create a new scalar based on a new type, which is uh, another constructor from Python, which is basically telling the type system that there is a new type HTML, which is based on string. Uh, but what, the reason why we do this, the reason why we do a new type is so that when we're using this API, when we, we're returning data for the blog page, we have to pass an instance of HTML. We cannot just pass a string. This is to make things more type safe as well. Um, and then for the query, similar to the first example, we create the fields and then we add the resolver. Uh, I'm just going to show the get block page by D. The get block pages is pretty much the same, uh, just returns a list. So here we have this get block page by D, except the ID returns an optional block page. We're fetching the model, and then if there is no data, we turn none, otherwise we turn an instance of uh, the graphical type. So you can see here that we are returning graphical type, but we're fetching a Python, uh, well, a Django model. Um, the reason why this is not mandatory, so you could return the page directly, mostly because the the, the return type, they, they add a similar shape or almost the same shape. So the model is an ID as a date and things like that. Uh, the reason why there is this kind of bit of code duplication is to uh, make this code more type safe. Um, with Whitetail, it's fine to just return you know the, the same shape of the, of the database that you have because you know it's a CMS; it's built for that. Uh, but if you're building a more complex Kafka API, you usually don't want to return the instance, the general instance directly because you want to you know shape the data in a different way. Uh, I just put this in the, into the example to you know make it clear that. You could do both, but it's probably usually it's best to return the graphical type, mostly for type safety as well. Cool. Um, I'm going to show the demo of this. So um, it's not going to be much different than what we showed. It's using a different tool, graphical, uh, but the, the the way it works is the same. So I have a way of fetching all the blog pages, and then I can get the ID, and it returns the ID, and then I can get the title and the body. And the, Works. And you can see here, if I hover over this, it's telling me that this is an HTML string. Um, and so the front end knows that this, you know, I can see it, but you know, it knows up front that this is HTML. Cool. 
Um, that was quite a bit of code to write, you know, it's especially when there are tools like uh, Django X framework or Django model forms, you would like to have a tool that's slightly easier to use or, you know, writing less code, especially in this case, when we are exposing a model that's meant to be used and as, it, as an API. Um, and so we have this extension of Survey, which is Survey Django, which basically is similar to Django X framework in a way that allows you to create a GraphQL API out of a Django model. And to recreate that API that we did before, um, you basically have to do this. So it's similar to what we had, but it has a couple of differences. The first one is that you're using the Django type decorator um, and passing the uh, blog page, and then you're listing all the fields using this photo keyword. So this is similar to Django as framework and Django model forms, uh, the field argument. You're basically listing all the fields you want to expose. We're using this syntax to be uh, consistent with how survey works and also to, to make it slightly more friendly to type checkers. And then the cool thing here is that you're using this new survey jungle field, which allows you to basically create a resolver um, on top of a uh, jungle model. So you don't have to write a resolver anymore. The, the code is doing that for you automatically. Cool. Um, the one thing that you need to do is to tell Survey Django that there is a new Django field. So the way Survey Django works is that uh, when you use photo, uh, for example, for body, it goes and find this uh, field inside the model, gets the Django type, the Django field type, and then tries to convert that to, um, to GraphQL. Uh, the issue with that is that it doesn't know of all the you know, custom fields, like for example, for, for the rich sex field, for, Word. So we need to basically tell Survey Django that that exists. Um, yeah, I have a few minutes left. So this is basically, you know, just a quick way to, to create a Django or Django API. And I kind of cheated because this API is already using Survey Django on the do. I didn't really write all the code to uh, that did done before. Um, but yeah, it works the same and can do all the things that somebody can also touch blog page. Uh, by ID, which is in terminal here, that's the same. Uh, okay. um, the issue with this is also there's still quite a bit of code. You know, you have to go and explicitly set all the fields. You need to create the query type. And I really wanted to build something that it's more plug and play. Um, and so this is what I've actually done this week, um, which is this. Uh, uh, new repo that yeah, I think I just released yesterday, which is survey workflow. Um, and the way this works, you install it, add it to your apps, and then you add the view, and that's it. Um, you don't really have to go and do anything else, anything uh, more than this. It's 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 basically really as plug and play as possible. And I cheated again, to be honest. This API is actually using survey uh, one tail. So all the, what you've done here is just these three lines of code, plus the package, obviously. Uh, and the cool thing of that is that you don't have to go and ask support for you know, all the bug there fields uh, manually. Uh, it's, it's all done for you. And it also supports string fields. So I have another uh, model here, which is the page. So I can actually title everything just as before. But then there is a special, well, more interesting type, which is this uh, on page, on page body. This is a union type of so multiple things. So this is powered by the, the stream field. So I have defined a heading block, image block, paragraph, paragraph block, and a two column block, which is what I had before here, all of this. And then I can go and fetch all the information. And this. The, the syntax for GraphQL union is a bit interesting because you have to uh, specify the type you want to fetch, and then for every type, uh, you need to specify the field. Um, so if you come on this, um, And I really like this because it's, you know, when I'm going to work with front ends, I can fix the type name is basically the type of the, the block that I'm getting back. And then in, in my front end, I can, you know, just do a switch around this. Uh, okay, if it's heading, return the heading. If it's uh, uh, body to columns, I return, you know, a grade with left column and right column, things like that. It's 
I think it's really, really nice API to, to work with, especially because it's type safe. And I guess you can also build checks in your code where, you know, if you have a new field, you can get a warning on the front end that, you know, you should handle that. So that's a bit, you know, if you haven't handled email, you can work and handle that. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've done this, this week. And I'm honestly really excited about this. Hopefully, uh, I mean, I have already a bunch of issues here that I want to do, like improving, uh, adding support for previews, improving support for image and things like that. Uh, this is very experimental. I mean, I really did this in a couple of days uh, just to prove that it works. Uh, so if you if you want to try, hit me up. Uh, really, uh, really looking forward to for people to try this. Uh, you can reach me out at here. There's all my links. And if you want to try survey, uh, feel free to jump into the Discord. Uh, we um, yeah, we're happy to have people in chat about GraphQL and even random stuff sometimes. So yeah. Thank you for listening to my talk. And yeah, happy to take questions if there's any. Thank you so much. We get to see another cat. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for your for your talk. We have uh, about two minutes until our next speaker. So I think depending on the length of questions, that might be one or two. Um, I did have one, but if there's others in the in the chat or in the room, let's take those first. Did anyone have any questions in the room? And what about on, on chat? Well, I had one. I have experience with uh, headless wagtail, but just a little bit. I don't remember all the nuances and when I uh, when I did it, but I remember uh, using graphene. Could you uh, speak to how they're different or similar if you have the context? Yeah, I used to be a contributor of graphene. One of the other reasons why I started um, survey is because of the lack of you know community driven. Uh, work for for graphene, so th that's 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 the main reason why I uh, worked on survey. Other than you know changing the API and having something that's a bit more effective, um, graphene is it's quite nice. I think it's definitely more popular than survey at least for now. Um, and you know it's, I mean it's hard to you know to talk about it like a competitor, but you, can, you know graphene works works well. It's just a has slowed. The, the development has slowed down quite a lot, especially in the last couple of years. That took a long time to release Graphene three, um, and you know it's a bit of a shame because you know it was really powerful library, um, and you know the, the issue is that there was no no many not many people that were able to maintain the library. Unfortunately, um, the, we we took a different approach with survey, and we tried to make this as more community driven as possible. So we have loads of maintainers actually. Well, no, sorry, lots of contributors and quite a few maintainers uh, because we try, you know, to, to make things as funny as possible. So that, for me, the main, you know, the main difference is the community. And in terms of API, we, I think Graphene does have more, you know, extensions, but we get in there, especially with the Django one, which I think is quite nice. I don't know if that explains. Um, awesome. Your question. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, Thank you for thank you for your talk and we'll be uh, announcing our, our next speaker.